Okay, thrive or nosedive. That's today's title of the video, as you've already seen. And there's a very good reason for that. And I've had to hide kind of the actual subject of today's video because I know the moment I mention it, many people will just click away or they won't even watch the video in the first place. And that is the cause of the problem. And it's actually why I'm having to make this video now to inform people of what is going on and why they need this information. So stick with me, I ask you, give me five minutes. If you don't even watch the whole video, that's fine. Well, give me five minutes and it will give you the building blocks to better harvest to come in years to come from a very, very simple process. Now, when you look at any new article for starting a new garden or a new allotment plot, they all sort of start with the same scenario. Have a look at your garden, work out which is north, south, east and west. Check your soil's pH. Measure your garden, draw it on a, path, on a piece of paper so you can plan inside. Go and check your local neighbourhood to see what's growing. And you do all that, or do you? Not many of you actually check your pH and that's what this is about. But do bear with me, stick with this for another few minutes and I'll help you grow better crops from it next year. Well, at least give you the understanding of what is going on in your garden. Now, the soil pH is simply a measure of how acid or how alkaline your soil is. And it runs from a measure of zero all the way up to about 14. Neutral being seven, so neither acid nor alkaline. And that's deemed just below neutral, between six and seven is deemed to be about the best for most garden plants and indeed for vegetable growing. Now, problems start to kick in with this with things like when you start a new vegetable garden, one of the first things many gardeners grow is potatoes because it's known as the clearing crop. It helps to clear weeds out. But potatoes will grow at four, which is actually quite acidic, but not a lot of other plants will grow at that. What happens when you get down to, into the acidic range, is things start to lock up in your soil. So all your nutrients that are in your soil, your phosphorus and your potassium, start to become less available to your plants. So that when you plant into acidic soil, there are less nutrients for your plants to thrive. And hence the title, Thrive or Nosedive. And you can throw any amount of feed, chemical or horse manure or compost at it. If your soil is too acidic, it just won't grow very well. But we can get around this, we can make amendments to the soil to, to change that. And we can quite easily measure the acidity or the alkalinity of your soil and get it to a place. You can use online charts to gauge how much amendment you need to put in and what. And we'll go and talk about that in a second. But all that information is there. And if you set yourself up once a year and now is the perfect time to do it, then you're all set for next year. You don't, that's one less thing for you to concern yourself with. You know that the soil is gonna be good. You know that everything that's in there is gonna be available to your plants and therefore your crops are gonna thrive and not nosedive. Now, how many of the gardeners that I asked did they test, had they tested their pH, actually went back and retested a year or two later. Well, this, the sad answer is not very many. It's one of those things that many gardeners know about, but very few do anything about, as I think I said earlier. And out of about 30 gardeners that I asked, I think it was two that regularly test their pH, uh, which is not really very good, because you've got to know where, it, where you, your soil's pH is at to unlock the nutrients in it to feed your plants. Now, if I also throw into the mix uh, diseases like club root, that starts to become very prevalent at um, a pH around about four, I think it is, very prevalent. And um, if you raise the pH 
back up to the preferred six and a half, seven, that becomes less prevalent. You won't eradicate it totally, but it's a better condition for, for your brassicas to grow with less chance of club root taking hold. So retesting really is good all round um, to protect against those things also. So how do we know what our pH is in our garden? Well, you can get little test kits. They form the little tiny test tubes like this. And you go and dig a soil sample and you test it with some chemicals and then look at the color of the liquid in there against a the little chart and it will tell you. But I've always found that to be a bit of a faff myself. If you've got a small garden, it's probably ideal. But for in, certainly in my position or in many allotment holders' positions, you're going to want one of these, which is a dedicated pH meter. And you can go round and periodically test your soil and you don't need to faff around with all the all the liquids and the charts and that you can it'll actually tell you straight on there now i'll do a quick zoom in on there so you can see it it'll tell you exactly what the ph of that soil is and i think this is my third or fourth one i keep breaking them <laughs> i stand on them and things or they fall off tables but they're very reliable and what i would suggest is if you look online you can find a, a ph chart for various liquids things like milk or water and stuff like that and you can basically dip it in to test and, and get a gauge so that you know that your gauge is accurate or if it's slightly out you'll know exactly by how much you can make that gauge but this one is fairly accurate um, and i'm more than happy with that now once you've gone round and you've measured all your soil you need to make amendments to it to get yourself back in that range of six and a half to seven and you do that by adding lime you can either use hydrated lime which is commonly known as like a slack lime it's what they'll use for making up lime mortar or a dolomitic lime now a dolomitic lime is dolomite rock and it's also got magnesium in it as well and a few other smaller trace elements so both are good for your soil the dolomitic lime is a little bit more expensive uh, and that's what I normally use. Last year when I bought my last bag, couldn't get hold of it for love of the money, I've gone with hydrated lime. But the good thing about that is it will change your soil's characteristic and its pH very quickly. If I was to treat the soil in here, I'd be able to come back in a couple of weeks and test it and it would be, you know, right in that respect. Also online are charts. Now, what you can do is you can test your soil, test the square metre of soil, get a rough idea of the pH of that, and the charts online will tell you how much lime you need to add to that to get it to a certain point. And it's very easy, you just come along a, a scale, say, right, for that square metre, I need four ounces of lime. Measure it out and mix it in job done and it's perfect at this time of year to do that just before Christmas or on the run up to Christmas because you're not adding any more feeds to your soil and adding feeds to your soil like horse manure or compost can change temporarily the, the pH of it or give you a false reading but you're not adding that at the minute so you are basically down to soil soil that's been used and grown plants in it and you're getting it ready for next year and then after Christmas, you can come back and test and make sure that you're in the right ballpark before you head into spring and before you start adding compost, manures, feeds, fertilizers, whatever you're going to do. So that's my advice is to use that. If you can get hold of it and it is a little bit more expensive, use the dolomitic lime to change the characteristic of your soil to adjust the pH. Elsewise, use a hydrated lime. Say so the hydrated lime will give you quicker results it's more caustic, so be aware of that, wear gloves, but it's cheaper also. So now that you've tested your soil, you've made an amendment with lime to it, and then you're going to come back after Christmas or before the next season starts, test again to ensure that your pH is in the right range. That's all well and good. But through next season, rain will happen. It happens everywhere, and it will start to wash that lime away from your soil and therefore your acidity will start to drop again. So at the end of next season, this time next year, 
check it again. You should still be in the, a good ballpark figure when you test with your probe next year or your little soil testing kit. But the year after, you'll probably notice it's starting to drop. And that's again when you go back in and test with the probe or with your soil kit and make adjustments as per the charts online. It all sounds very complicated. Now, I've tried to condense this. This is a science subject and it's huge. And I could probably make 10, 30 minute videos on the subject and barely touch the surface with it. All I'm doing is giving you the building blocks and letting you know that it could be why your, your crops are failing, such as with your potatoes. You may plant them when your pH is perfect and you may plant them in the same position year on year. And where your pH was perfect in the first year, by year three, you might be getting a bad crop because your pH has dropped too much. Or, on the other hand, conversely, because your pH has only dropped to four, you're still getting a good crop and you think your ground is good and this pH nonsense is a load of rubbish. So this is why it's important to know where you are and to know the confines of what the acidity, the alkalinity will do, where plants grow at. And as I say, it's a huge science subject too. Do go online, do go to trusted sources, like for instance, in the UK, you might go to the RHS because they've got the, the best and information, whereas somebody like myself can make quite easily a mistake by a slip of the tongue and lead you down the, the wrong path. So it's quite easy to talk for hours on this subject, but that doesn't do you any good. You're gonna get bored. You're probably bored already. But I say that's an essential building block that I think you, you should know about. And the more you read up on it, the better. So please do go and look into that. Please do test your soil, find out where your pH is. I think it's more important than all the knowledge you've already got about all of your garden. That's how much credence I give that. Um, but there we go. That's test your pH and adjust your soil. Your soil is your building block and it's what grows everything. If your soil's not right, your plants won't be right. If your plants aren't right, infection, bugs, pests, diseases will all attack them and everything will die and the world will blow up. And, 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 and do you get the point? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> All right, I got a little bit ex excited there. The world's not gonna blow up, or is it? But do look into testing your pH of your soil. If you look after your soil, your soil will look after you. And that's really what I wanted to say today. As long as you're aware of it um, and you can test it, if you go for the little soil test kits, the little vials, you will need to replace them. You may be paying a five or a test. If you get a meter, you can pay as little as little as £10 then you can use it again and again and again so in monetary terms it makes sense to get a meter I think my meter I think that cost me 20 quid I will put a link to it underneath it's from a it's not from the major sort of Amazon or eBay I bought it from I bought it from an actual gardening website I think it was too Western Elliot but I'll write the link underneath anyway for you to have a look at that but yeah, do, do be aware of that. But anyway, that's enough of it for now. Do look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Toronto. Well, it's going to end. Help.